Okay, so the final thing I wanted to uh, cover actually was a story from uh, February, but since I wasn't here at the end of February, we, you haven't seen it. And that's the, the first launch of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket. And we certainly have talked about this in the past. It's something that's been in the works for many years. But uh, SpaceX, their workhorse is called a Falcon 9, and that's one of these uh, boosters. And so that's what they have been using to, uh, to launch uh, commercial satellites, uh, cargo carriers to the space station for NASA, and some uh, military uh, uh, payloads. And so the Falcon Heavy is basically combining three of those, tying them together. So uh, you've got 27 engines in total, and uh, that makes it, uh, it gives it about uh, five million pounds of thrust, and uh, by about one and a half times, that is the most powerful rocket in the world right now, and has the, the largest payload. It can launch something like 130,000 pounds into low Earth orbit. Um, so they've, they've been working on getting ready to, to test this. And uh, SpaceX is owned by Elon Musk, who also owns Tesla. And uh, what's customary on the first launch of any new vehicle is you just put a dummy payload on board. Usually that's blocks of concrete and barrels of water, but he decided to do something a little more interesting, which was to launch his Tesla Roadster. And uh, we'll see a little bit more of that in a second. And so this was the night before launch. Um, again, it's from uh, Kennedy Space Center. They've taken over, they, they have a 25 year lease from NASA on one of the two uh, space shuttle launch pads. This is also the launch pad that Apollo 11 took off from. So a very historic uh, location. So here's the video of the launch on the 7th of February. can probably turn that up a little bit. And so this is the camera on board looking down the side of the core. And uh, you'll see the two side vehicles peel off. And then the payload bearing came off. And lo and behold, they put a dummy on board with a spacesuit driving the car. So this actually was sent on a, a trajectory that carries it past Mars. And so it's escaped Earth's gravity. Um, and you know, it was just a test. But uh, the other really cool thing is the rocket is designed for all three of the first stage components to be recovered, to return to the ground. And the two side ones succeeded in doing that. And here's a, a video of that happening. This is a view looking down on the side of both of them. Here's one of them coming in. This is the landing site on the left. So they've been doing this for a couple of years now. This is, I think, the 24th first stage that they've recovered with these two. 
but it's the first time they've done two of them. And uh, this is just a still image of, of both of them coming in. So that, that was exciting. And, uh, and then we have just the nice views of, uh, of uh, Starman uh, on his way to Mars. And so, uh, I mean, this is still connected to the upper stage. Uh, it had battery power for about a day and a half or so, so they got images uh, like this of the Earth receding behind it, which was really cool. And then, uh, of course, the batteries died, so that's, uh, that's the end of it. But, you know, great advertisement for Tesla, and it certainly, I mean, Elon Musk has gotten a lot of grief for just being frivolous and, you know, sending a $150,000 car uh, up, but it certainly caught people's attention, and I think that's one of the things we need, uh, you know, in dealing with certainly young students coming into the museum. I think when I was a young student, we were going to the moon and everybody wanted to be an astronaut and everybody wanted to do this. Now, you know, the, the younger people, they're interested in space, but they don't see a place for themselves. And I think things like this certainly can pique people's interest and, in, uh, you know, all of the, the space technology companies are looking for or new blood, because uh, all of the experienced people are nearing or past retirement age, and uh, so we need to get lots more people doing that. What better way than uh, to see things like this happening? So that at least we get to end on a happy note. Uh, so our next uh, program will be again the last Wednesday of April, back in Ricketson again, and. Uh, I think I'll just back up and leave that up and, uh, and we'll open it up for questions.